back with another video and make sure y'all hit the like button for this video man i'm about to hit y'all with 300 dollars worth of game for free at least according to this instagram account which i saw this effect at now i was asked to recorrect this effect within the venture resolve I'm like 90% of the way there. There's still some parts I gotta kinda figure out how to do in DaVinci, but I'm gonna give you this right now, get you started. Now this effect by no means is hard to do, just gotta know your nose structure and you need, in order to get that little pop, that little extra little sauce on it, you're gonna need a texture pack, texture pack. I can hardly even say that word. But I actually created one, it's actually in the link down below. 15 bucks, you can get 45 different textures that you can use in any video or any other projects that you like. To get you started, I got five minutes waiting for you. It will also be in the link down in the description on the page. Make sure you download them. And without any further ado, man, let's hop into the venture resolve and get this video cracking. All right, I got my clip here from the new money back yo Kodak Black video. I got the spot where I want the effect to take place. So I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna split the clip and then I'm gonna hit the little snowflake over here in the inspector tab, the freeze frame. Then I'm gonna probably go about one, two, three, four, five. Go about five frames in. I'm gonna split the clip again. I'm gonna highlight the remainder of the clip. Hit the little fast forward button. That's gonna actually allow it to play back in its normal speed. The fro freeze frame clip is gonna remain frozen. Now, so we have some time to work. We're gonna actually take the remainder of the clip, move it up. We're gonna go to the frozen clip, hit Control D, and we're gonna change the, the duration time to three seconds. Now, this is not an absolute number. Well, actually. 30 seconds. It's not an absolute number. This is what I've been doing for my particular effect on my particular clip. You can change the number however you want to. So hit change and now it's a three second long clip. Drop the rest of it back here on the back end side. So you play it back. Go into a freeze frame. And then remove the resume playing. You're gonna right click the frozen clip and go to new fusion clip. And we're gonna take this into fusion. All right, so now we're in fusion with our clip. And this clip was recorded in the awkward aspect ratio. It actually makes it more uh, fitting for mobile devices or on your cell phone. So it's actually wider than it is tall. So that's why you have these big transparent backgrounds. So to fix that, you're gonna take a background node, take the output, give it to the output of median one, select the merge one, and then hit control T and switch it out step is not necessary for the effect that's just to fix this clip or if you have a clip that's in a similar situation it's just to fix the clip now if you click to merge one and click another background node we're actually gonna slide it down to the end move this over here we're gonna hit the f2 change it to color now this background node is actually gonna determine the color of the scratch out effect you can go into the spectra tab you hit the little drop down menu I use yellow in the example. I'm actually gonna use white for this one. So we can go over here, change it to white. I'm actually gonna move this down to the bottom here. Then we we'll select the merge two and hit control T as well. And we'll put it in the background. Now we go into media pool. I'm gonna grab one of the textures from my texture pack. I'm gonna close the media pool back out. I'm gonna take the output of this and connect it to the output of merge one. It's gonna give us a merge. You can select the merge and go to apply mode in the inspector tab. Dropping from normal to screen. Now the textures are all 4K, so you notice they're actually extremely big. This is actually the length or the width, length and width of the uh, texture pack. To, now within the merge, you, know, you can actually control it this size by dropping it down. It makes it more of an even square, and it, keep, well, it keeps it as an even square. But if you want more precise control, select your media two. I'm actually going to change it to overlay. I'm going to hit F2 overlay and then we're going to click the transform node and in the inspector tab uncheck use size and expect and then you can actually change it how you want you can use these handles here or you can just grab the node grab the uh, window i mean and that point is only affecting the clip itself and not the actual background and click back here in the empty space to get rid of the line now you can actually get more of a get more of an actual uh, look at it I'm gonna adjust it just a little bit more. All right, there we go. And in my demo clip, I actually had it desaturate the color. I'm gonna grab a CC node. I'm so gonna grab it, click merge three, click the CC node. Everything's gonna go white. I'm gonna go down here to your node tree and transform. I'm gonna grab the transform 
the output and connect it to the green input. No, actually, no, we're gonna take it to the blue input, the mass input. That'll bring back your clip. From there, you're gonna go to merge two. Gonna hit control spacebar. Type in mask. You're gonna get the mask paint node, which should be the first one. Your clip gonna go white again. You're gonna go into the spectra tab on your mask. You're gonna hit mask in the spectra tab and hit invert. Gonna bring back your clip. You're gonna go over to the toolbar up top here. Make the fourth selection, which is stroke. Because otherwise it's in, it's otherwise it's in multi stroke. So if you, whatever you do in the first frame, it's gonna be for that particular frame and it's not gonna affect the rest of the clip. So if you hit stroke, it goes through an entire clip. Now you get all that set up, then change the color. We'll go back to the color tab. What color node, I'm sorry. The frame, this video is 24 frames per second. So what, roughly one second is around about 20. I think it's like 23.69, something like that. So we're gonna go into first frame. We're gonna hit the keyframe on the color tab. Well, on the color node, I'm sorry. We're gonna go to about frame 23. So we're gonna go over here and type it in. Oh, double click, 23. That's roughly about one second. So we're gonna drop down the saturation. You don't have to make it, you don't actually have to use saturation. You can actually go back here. If you want, you can change the color and make it turn blue or red, however you want to. Just the dropping the saturation give you more dramatic pause, more dramatic effect to it. So I'm gonna drop about right here where it's not completely washed out and just play it back over time. You see it changes color. You go into the spline tab. To make things easier in the spline tab, hit, click the little menu button here and click show only selected tool. So the tool you got selected is the color tab, with the color corrector node, I'm sorry. You're gonna hit zoom to fit, select all, and I'm just gonna hit either S on the keyboard or hit this little knob, this little icon here to smooth it out. So you get a little smoother information, uh, smooth animation, I'm sorry. If you get any value out of the video so far, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Now back in the mask paint node, I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna go into controls, drop down to brush controls, and drop your size all the way down to zero. Hold shift on the keyboard. Highlight the numbers when you see the icon change. You're gonna kick it up to probably about one or maybe 11, 12, something like that. You want a really small paintbrush. So hold control, you can zoom in. You see the little dot right there. That's gonna be your paintbrush and basically you just wanna go through and start scratching out. Now the smaller you have your paintbrush, the more precise the strokes you can make. You see kinda, kinda a little faded out right there. You can go kind of go back and forth with the keystrokes with the uh, stroke of the meaning of the brush. And some deeper grooves there. And it's meant to look kind of like a like a knife or something that's cutting up a picture. So you want to kind of avoid kind of curves and want basically kind of keep everything vertical or straight, more or less. Of course, you can hit Control Z if you happen to go out the, outside the frame. Just for fun, we're gonna scratch up this pole too. Oh, too far. Now that you get your subject all scratched up and scratched out, we're gonna go through now using the mask and animate it. No. If you go back into the color node, which is actually a background note that we change the color. It changes the color of the scratch out effect too. So if you want to make it red, black, yellow, green, you know, anything in between, it'll change that color. Like I said, I just went with red for the, I mean, I went with white, but I like the red. It looks pretty good. Now to animate it, we're going to click the, we'll click the ma uh, mask paint node, and then we're going to hit rectangle mask. You notice it's already gone. What you want to do is then to basically just Stretch the rectangle mask out so it covers the entire frame. You can actually go over the frame if you want to. We're gonna go back to frame 23. Now in frame 23, you're gonna go into the spectra tab of the rectangle mask and hit the keyframe on the center. Then we're gonna click on empty space in the uh, node tree. We're gonna skip ahead about three frames. And basically you just wanna skip three or so frames. You can get anywhere from three to five and just move the mask.
Now, you, in order to maintain it, kind of stop them because it's going to play a lot smoother than that on the edit page. To maintain that stop motion like effect where it's kind of choppy, I'm going to spline editor, zoom to fit. You can see all the different keyframes. You're going to hit select all, and instead of smoothing out, we're going to hit step in. And that's where you're going to give you the, the choppy frames. Now, in the example too, I also had the effect kind of go over and cover up the entire subject. To do that, you're gonna go over here, you're gonna pick another merge node, drop it on the timeline or on your node tree. You're gonna hit Control C on the uh, color node and Control V to paste it. You're gonna reconnect it to merge four. Then hit Control T to swap it back around. You're gonna hit Control Space and get you a new mask, a uh, mask paint node. Connect it to the mask tab, which is the uh, blue tab. I'm gonna go in here and on the mask, gonna hit invert again. I'm just gonna go back here and hit stroke. Go back to the controls, brush controls, brush size. We're gonna drop it down. And the whole shift makes it go down about one at a time. We're gonna make this one about about eight now. Let's go. Yeah, about 13 or so. I'm going to drop this down here a little bit and zoom in. Basically, you just want to take the brush, scratch everything out. I know how you guys scratched out, going to the mask paint node, going to hit the rectangle tool. And you see this red square come up. You're actually going to go in here to merge on the paint mode and going to hit subtract. And that's going to actually subtract the scratches that we made. Make the search the frame out, cover both subjects. Then you go back to rectangle one. And as you look up here, you can see the keyframe where it actually ended it. So it ended at frame 52, I mean 42. We're gonna go about to about frame 50. Click back on your rectangle two. Click the center button on the other uh, keyframe. You're gonna click, click, <clears throat> click an empty space on your node tree and then skip ahead about three frames. One, two, three, four. Three, yeah, four, yeah, four is fine. And basically just gonna animate the mask again. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. And you see your scratch is coming back. So we'll go back another three frames. One, two, three. And then one, two, three. Then you're gonna go back to your spline editor. Do the same thing. Zoom to fit, select all, step in. All right, we're getting to the last little nitty gritty now. Actually gonna hop in here and gonna grab a transform node, drop it straight on the timeline behind everything else. And this is gonna give you like the little dramatic zoom effect. So you're gonna go into the first keyframe on the side, hit, hit the keyframe there and go to your last frame. And just gonna zoom it up a little bit. You don't have to do it all the way in, just whatever your liking is or whatever look you're going for. And if you play it back, you get the little dramatic zoom in. Of course, you know, you wanna go into the spline editor Zoom to fit, select all, hit Insta Smooth, and close that out. Now with all that done, you're going back into your edit page and you see the, the effect kind of playing out there. You're going to add one more thing to it and in your effects tab on the video or fusion transitions. I believe this is the default transition, if I'm not mistaken. If not, drop a comment down below. But grab it, drop it on the timeline. I don't have enough frames in between this clip and the fusion clip to Put it over both of them as an as the actual transition. So we're just gonna go over here and click this and you're gonna drop it down to six seconds. Now this may differ on your clip. You might have enough frames, it'll just drop itself in place, but you want it to be a quick flash. You don't, wanna, you don't need to be too long. It's gonna hold Alt, click on it, drag to the other end. Well, it should have replicated, but if it don't, just go into your frames on the inspector tab, type in the amount of frames and let it render out, then play it back. You got a finished result. And that's gonna be it for this video. Like I said, it's not the whole effect, but I still gotta figure out how to at least do this part here within DaVinci Resolve. I'm not sure. I kinda got some ideas of where to get started, but once I get it going, I'm damn sure we'll make sure I put up a video for it. I appreciate you watching. Y'all hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.